which happened very shortly after that. Uh, my mother was active in a number of civic and charitable causes that involved fundraising. In early March, a few weeks before my 10th birthday, she asked me if I would like to go with her as she canvassed people to raise money for an orphanage in Nashville. It was a Sunday morning, and we set off together just after sunrise. It was colder than usual for that time of year. Light frost was on the ground, and a haze of smoke and smog hovered just above the rooftops as we drove from our home in Bellmead to a neighborhood near the state capitol. I'd never been to that neighborhood before. It was nothing like anything I had ever seen. The houses were small and narrow, wood frame, with gray decaying wood and no paint. They were bunched up together, one beside another, with hardly any room to squeeze through between the cracks. They call them shotgun shacks, my mother said, casually as we made our way to the first house, stepping carefully up two broken steps. There was trash in the small yard, trash everywhere for that matter, and some broken toys lying under an old swing in front of a porch. It did not look like anyone was home except that the black smoke was coming out of all the small chimneys. In fact, Smoke was pouring out everywhere, which contributed to the smog and gave an eerie appearance to the entire neighborhood. <coughs> Making the scene even more bizarre was the silhouette of the state capitol rising within a stone's throw of the backyards of these homes. For all I knew, we could have been in another planet. We're going to knock on that door? I asked hesitantly. Well, of course we are. We've been given a list of addresses, and these are the ones on our list. Mother knocked, and we waited, and then she knocked again. No answer. Just as I was about to suggest that it was time to move on, the door opened very cautiously, leaving a space no more than three or four inches, a space large enough to see two eyes on the face of a black woman peering out. The eyes showed fear. I wanted to crawl into a hole. A quivering voice says, What do you want? What do you want with me? My mother explained that we were raising money for a worthy cause, an orphanage, and asked if she would like to contribute. Just a minute, she said, and excused herself, leaving the door partially open, wide enough for me to peer in. The room had practically no furniture. There was an old wooden table, a couple of broken chairs, a mattress and a bed springs in the corner where an infant was sleeping. One of the windows was broken, allowing the cold, sunny morning wind to whistle into the room. Were it not for an overworked, coal-burning stove in the center of the room, the place would have been freezing. A minute or so later, she was back, and in her hand was a nickel. I'm so sorry, ma'am. I would like to give more, but this is all I got. She handed the nickel to my mother and dropped it into the bucket that I was carrying. Well, that's the first one, my mother said with a smile, and off we went to the next house, where essentially the same scene repeated itself. My recollection is that almost every one we canvassed, canvassed on that cold March morning put something in that bucket. Most of the time it was a nickel or a dime, and a couple of instances it was only a penny. And from one or two houses we received a quarter. Most of the people who answered the door were black, but not all. We must have visited close to 50 homes that morning, five or six of which were white families, and their living conditions were no better than those of the black families. By noon, we had finished our list and were ready to go home. We had collected less than $10. So that was my, my first experience. And I wonder how many of us in this room have had similar experiences being young and, and basically being confronted with, uh, with a, a, a situation that is a no-brainer in terms of injustice.